from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Lechacha, the pull to the land of Israel. If we ask ourselves a question, what moved Terach in the end of last week's Parsha, Parshat Noah, to move to the land of Israel, toward Canaan? Then he didn't make it, but he tried Lalechet Arzak Canaan. He was going to the land of Canaan. Why? Why did he do it? Ramban Nachmanides suggests that he had this, uh, this spiritual sense on his own that he should go to the land of Israel. He stopped in Haran. Alas, he never made it. And it's Avraham who then hears the call in Haran to continue his father's journey. The Ibn Ezra thinks that God called to Avraham in their original location in Ur Kazdim, and that Terach simply slept along. He simply came along with Avraham. Why would Terach, if it was his idea, why would he want to go to Israel? Ramban suggests that Terach was maybe escaping that king, King Nimrod, according to Midrash. They were being persecuted by him for Avraham's beliefs, so he left for that reason. Similarly, there's a Midrash that simply praised Terach for choosing the land of Israel even before it was commanded. He intuited it like Abraham kept the commandments because he intuited them. Terach intuited the holiness, the draw, the pull of the land of Israel. The Tzor a Spanish and Portuguese exile, says that Terach was stirred in his heart to go to the land of Canaan. Rabbi Salvechik writes about the idea that it's our job to sort of find that quest, find that spiritual sixth sense that tells us where to go. Rav Yol Binun, an innovative Tanakh teacher in the land of Israel, says that perhaps Terach was a merchant, a merchant interested in commerce. He thought maybe the land of Israel would be a good place, a crossroads between Egypt and the Mesopotamia. Or, because his wife was barren, Abraham's wife was barren, as it says in last week's Parsha, she was Akara. Therefore, you know, a change of scenery would be good, so he left. The others, Nahor, did not leave because he had children. He didn't have that problem, that challenge. Rabbi Yaakov Meidan, my Rebbe in Shivat Haritzion in Israel, says, look, let's look at the context. What was the previous story before this week's Parsha? Well, basically, Aside from genealogy, it was the Tower of Babel. At the end of the Tower of Babel, God spread them out. The, the Hemek Davar, Hashbam, they say that it was God's desire that people spread out through the land, and it was this call to scatter through the land that caused Terach to leave Mesopotamia, leave Babel, and go further. Terach was driven by the universal impulse to fill the earth, as God said, it says in Genesis 1, should fill the land and conquer it. So then we can suggest that there are actually two layers behind Avraham's move to Israel, not only Terach's. On the one hand, he's fulfilling the divine command, what's particular to the Jewish people, to Abrahamic people, to move to the land of Israel, because it's going to be his land. Secondly, He's fulfilling the universal call to spread out throughout the land. Rabbi Yol Benun says that, in fact, that's what he was doing. He, he was responding to that centripetal force after the Tower of Babel to, to spread out and also responding to his own unique calling from God, call of the Jew toward the land of Canaan. Rabbi Mordechai Breuer, a radical and fascinating teacher I also had the privilege of studying with in the land of Israel. He says, look at the three models we have here. We have Avraham, who was called to Israel and made it to Israel. We have Terah, who went toward Israel, but never made it. And we have Lot, who made it to Israel, but he couldn't stick with it. He eventually moves away from Israel to Moab. So, the question is, can we fulfill our Jewish mission while fulfilling our humanistic mission? And the story here is that Avraham is that ultimate humanist, ultimate universalist, who's able to be a particularist at the same time. 
<laughs> someone who's able to carry out the ultimate particularistic mission of being the father of a Jewish nation, of a nation that's going to receive the Torah, of a nation of the land of Israel, a small place in the Middle East. But Abraham is clearly a universalist. He loves humanity. He has its open doors. And he's able at the same time that he moves to Israel, moving away from Babylonia, away from society and civilization, really. He also moves toward his destiny and toward the international, universal call to spread out in the land. He, he, he shows that we can be citizens of the world, fulfilling the various trends of, of the times, at the same time that we're fulfilling our very unique, particularistic call to enter the call of Torah, Sinai, and Judaism. Avram showed that there needn't be a contradiction between our particularistic calling and our universalistic calling, our parental calling and our own. He fulfilled his father's desire and his desire at the same time. We don't have to say, well, should I be like my father or should I be like myself? We can find a way where the two weld together. I'm doing what I want to do, which is also what my father wanted to do, what my father in heaven wants to do. Let's be, let's be like Avraham. Let's be universalistic and particularistic at the same time. Let's be like Avraham to get the job done. Let's not be like Terah who never makes it. Let's not be like, like Lot who makes it but can't stick with it. Let's be like Avraham, who makes it, sticks with it, and stays with it. This is the dual call, the dual pull of the land of Israel. It's a land of the Jews. It's a land that ultimately all of humanity will be called to. The Jews just heard that calling a little bit before others. Thanks for joining us here at the Anshay Sfarad Beth Elimeth Congregation here in Memphis, Tennessee. Join us each week for our discussion of the Parsha and the holidays. And thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asby.org.